Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of the basics of nodes in Unreal Engine. In today's episode we're going to be going over the event tick node, what it is, how it works and how you can use it in your games. So the event tick is something you want to be cautious of because it can lag out your game if used incorrectly. So it will fire off every single tick. Now a tick is a frame, so if you're running at 60 frames a second you're going to be running at 60 ticks and it's going to fire off 60 times every single second. So again the event tick is going to fire off quite a lot and it will fire off every single frame. So again, 144 frames a second means this event is gonna fire off 144 times every single second as well. So like I said at the start, this obviously means it can be quite demanding on your PC if you use it too much or if you're using it wrong. So I personally rarely use the event tick, I only use it if I really need to. And a great replacement alternative for it are custom events. Because what a lot of people use event tick for is finding out values. So if the health goes below a certain value, do this. What you can do is have a custom event and then when you take damage, then check it. So you're not checking it all the time constantly, you're just checking it when you need to. And I do have another video on custom events, but that's not what we're going into today. That was just a little caution, a little warning of use event ticks if you need it. There's nothing wrong with using them at all. You can use them, but make sure you use them properly and don't overuse them. Because again, they fire off every single frame. So the delta seconds is this float value here. Now this is the duration of time since the event was last executed. So when the event executes and it executes again, the time between those two executes is called the delta seconds. For example, if I were to put in a print string here on event tick, which is going to fire off every frame as we mentioned earlier, so this will spam the screen full of this string because it's going to fire off constantly. And I'm just going to connect in the delta seconds in there, so this is now going to print the delta seconds here, so the time in between each frame. So for me, that is going to be around about 0.01 and then it's kind of changing very quickly because again it's going to be different each time because it's every single frame it's not the most consistent thing but it is also consistent in the fact that it's always at 0.01 so when i was testing out before i was getting 0.008334 seconds or 8.334 milliseconds now obviously it's going to change depending on how well your pc is currently running because again this is going to change for everyone on their own individual PC because some people have a better frame rate, some people have a worse frame rate. So if you're playing at two frames a second, this is obviously going to have quite a big delta seconds gap because it's only going to fire off two times every second. But if you've got 144 frames a second, then this is going to fire off 144 times every single second, so the delta seconds gap will be a lot smaller. Now I have quite a few different things running on my PC at the moment, which is why it's kind of a little bit slower than it has been before but you get the picture that delta seconds is the time in between each time the event was called. Now this is good if you want to do something frame rate dependent, that way no matter how many frames you get, this code will always be in time if your frames in system and the result will always be the same. So like I was saying, someone with a high FPS will have a different delta seconds to someone with a low FPS, so you can mess about with this value of the delta seconds to get it so each person will have the exact same experience. So something might be quicker for somebody else because they have a higher frame rate and a lower delta seconds. So there are different ways to use this to optimize and keep everything the same speed relative to the frame rate. So again, obviously their game will run better, but it will still contextually run the same as yours dependent on your frame rate. Now there isn't really much to show with this because it's event tick, you just do whatever you want off of this. It's just something which fires off all the time. So what I see a lot of people doing is getting a branch off of event tick here with a condition of maybe their health or their stamina so they can see if when their health or stamina has dipped below so they know when to regenerate it. But like I said earlier, custom events are a lot more efficient of doing that because you can just fire off whenever you want. But another thing you could do is you could do movement input and you then use the delta seconds as the scale value so no matter how many frames you're getting you'll always get the same movement result. So it's very similar to how they have it set up already here. So you can see we have the world delta seconds. So that's the turn and also the movement which is down here, they also have the axis value there. So it would just be the turn rate instead, well delta seconds, and that's again to make sure that the turn rate for the camera is going to look perfect no matter what your frame rate is. Also on the event tick, you can only drag out one executable, so where is it? It's up here. So I have the branch there, and if I were to get another branch, I can't connect them both in at the same time. So what's a way around this? Hold on S, left click to get a sequence. So and so now we can fire off multiple things at once. I do have another video explaining sequences as well. But without the sequence, you can only have one line of code from this executable event. But I think that'll be it for this video on explaining what an event tick node is. I hope you understand it a bit more now. That was kind of a lengthy explanation there in the middle. 
again, hope you understand it more. If you do or don't, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and help you understand it a bit more with maybe a few more examples if you didn't understand it. But again, hope you did. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.